Yo, 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 we are here in Bangkok. I heard that in Koh Phangan there are some really hardcore Muay Thai gyms. One of them is the MAA Koh Phangan, and I want to check it out. Boom. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This message is for Norwegian. Look what happened to my clothes after two months. I overused them too much. I can't wait for my new delivery from Adidas. Thank you very much. Yeah, I'm gonna miss the gloves. So many nice moments. So many nice knockouts in Sri Lanka. I'm gonna miss them. Hit it! That's what I'm talking about! Wait! Okay now. From Phuket to Bangkok, from Bangkok to Koh Samui, from Koh Samui to Koh Phangan. We finally arrived here, guys. Check it out. Pascal and I founded a gym about a year ago with the vision to bring a beautiful space for every kind of martial arts enthusiasts from fighter to amateur. Whoever comes to our place, whether it's a beginner and you just want to be fit or you want to be a fighter who want to train for the hardest challenge of your life, you find your right spot in here. In the today's episode, I have the pleasure to train with Pascal Schrott. Maybe some of you guys know him. He is multiple times world champion in Muay Thai and kickboxing. And maybe you can remember on the scene back where a guy broke his neck in a fight, where he got pinned from a Chinese guy. It's this guy. He recovered, he came back. And we're going to also listen a little bit about his story, about recovery, and how he did here this fantastic facility. Yeah. Hey, ask me how I did it, I'm telling them grace. Ask me how I'm living, I'm telling them great. Finally, I changed my outfit. What do you think of this sexy clothes, guys? Ask me how I'm living, I'm telling them great. New me, no time to waste. What a sexy outfit. I keep wanting no out of shape. Need a hero, go find a cake. New me, no time to waste. Look at me and see I don't play. I keep running no out of shape. Need a hero, go find a cake. Hey, no need for the B-roll. I was masked up and no hero. Breakfast in the morning, it was cereal and an E-bro. Here you see a very nice concentration drill. Where you have to turn to open the hands all in one. Quite nice for concentration. I beat the freak go again. Uh, I'm going beast mode again. Keep flowing and keep knowing that I've arrived and keep blowing it. Five aside that ball's going in many times. I never blow while I'm in my prime. Whoa, 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 whoa. That's me how I'm living. I'm telling them great. Ask me how I did it. I'm like a little bit upper body rotation. You lock like this and you contract. Go down and keep tension and circle slowly, 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 slowly. Big radius and back. New me, no time to waste. Look at me, you see, I don't play. I keep running, no out of shape. Need a hero, go find a cake. No need for the B roll. I was masked up with no hero. Breakfast in the morning. Yeah. I love it when the coach is also a fighter because he knows exactly what you need in which portions. It's one of the first gyms where we do a properly warm up together for the personal trainings. I love it. Okay, so today we're gonna work with the resistance bands. It's one of my favorite exercises because it's really soft on the joints and it really gives you the deeper muscle. 
So we're gonna work each punch 10 repetition. Starting off with a jab, with a cross, uppercuts and hooks. I'm standing in my fight stance and now I have to generate that power actively forward, punch, and then I have to actively pull back and I cannot have the resistance back pull my head through this balance. This exercise gives you explosivity, power. After that, you, your hands gonna fly. Ask me how I did it, I'm telling them grace. Ask me how I'm living, I'm telling them great. New me, no time to waste. Look at me, you see I don't play. I keep one and no out of shape. Need a hero. So the focus is also straight impact. Imagine you're touching a hot plate. Uh, I'm Simon, um, I'm from Oxford in the UK, come out to Koh Phangan for one month to, uh, to come and train some Muay Thai, I've come to MAA, it's a really nice gym, it's got great trainers, uh, everyone's really friendly, it's great value for money and it's nice, fresh, it's a new gym. The coaches, they're, they're really good, they're really nice, uh, I've been training with Max today, uh, he's, he's a great coach, uh, just doing five rounds on the pads and then a bit of cardio and, uh, and some sparring. Hi, my name is Saskia and I'm super happy to be trainer here at the Martial Arts Academy in Koh Phangan. I really love this place, like I'm here since five years, the equipment is in super great conditions, the trainers are the best in Thailand that you can find. The head coach himself, Pascal, is like an incredibly talented and charismatic guy who's giving you the best skills ever you can learn for the martial arts. It brings you to a complete next new level of training and experiencing martial arts, just way beyond just the techniques. There's this harmonious, strong flow of interconnection, the classes, how they're scheduled, just makes sense and so, yeah. It's a really massive pleasure of being part of this amazing team here. Now we're gonna work back drill for head movement and to create the proper ankle. I always want to have my hip facing my target. Doesn't matter if it's my opponent, the bag, or sparring partner. I always stand my hip square. So one good exercise, for example, is one, one, two. Now I wanna roll down to the side, stepping with my right foot and ducking down. Step out, straight body, straight. One, one, two. And now from that position when I'm sitting in, I'm ducking down, I'm rolling over. Down and straight, body straight. Back in fight stance. Rumors on the street say that Pascal had carbs before 10 years. <laughs> I eat cups every day, my friend. <laughs> what I also like to do is to change the size of the gloves during the training. When I'm on the heavy bag, I go to 16 ounce. When I do pads, between 12 and 10. It depends on which intensity I'm working on. If I'm working technical, I use more weight. If I go in crazy, power shots, I use less weight. moment it's our first time of pet so we're trying to reach the the right distance the right feeling the right touch and when we have that we just change this the stance and go to the other and try with the other two to complete yo check this the fists are shaking that means I'm warm now let's go to the power combinations boom <laughs> Make sure as a fighter, when you enter the ring as a man, you're gonna go over the ropes. As a woman, you go under the ropes. So, what are you gonna do? I have an idea. <laughs> he go in the middle.
Yo, Pascal, can you show us your favorite boxing combination? Hey, one of my favorite combinations is always something with body shots. So we go jab, uppercut, body shot, same side. Uppercut, straight, hook. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, we stay strong. Ba, 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 ba. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yes. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yes. <laughs> now we're gonna do some tire sprints. We have heavy car tires here connected with a big rope. We hold it over our chest. It's really good for explosiveness. We have to generate a lot of power and have to stop ourselves again. So it's kind of an interval training. You start strong, you recover, you start strong again. It's the same intensity when you fight. You explode, you take a step back, you breathe. You explode, you take a step back, you breathe. Now I'm gonna show them the Albanian version. What's up, man? We are in West Kopangang. Here's my new chain. It's in my grip, man. My Look grip. The second chain. I bet that Senat is not able of flipping that tire. That How tire many push-ups you bet? How many push-ups? 50. I start. You start 50 push-ups? <laughs> First attempt, wait, because I need some doping. Make a commercial for my bar, my friend. <laughs> the best shoes in the town. Our training is over, our training is done. Pascal, first of all, thank you very much for your time for the training. It was awesome. It was cool to see some new angles, some new perspective and some new exercises. Pascal, what I want to know from you. Everybody remember on that fight where this Chinese guy pinned you down and broke your neck. And people said, you never can fight again. And again, you became world champion. Yeah? Sure. How was the feeling after this? How did you recover? What helped you mentally? So first of all, like I don't let other people decide about my destiny. So I know about myself, you know what I'm capable of, what I'm not capable of. So I don't have other people put limitation on my physical uh, possibilities. So this is what I think, you know, most people already struggle with, you know, having a doctor tell you, you can't do this, you can't do that, you know, doesn't mean that you can't do it. It's just his opinion, you know, and it's up to you if you listen to that opinion or not. But in that case, I knew better and I did better. So <coughs> what the... Uh, I think in a life situation like this, you have two options. You either put your head down and you fall into depression and you never recover again, or you get out of it, you know, move on, you stay positive and you work hard for it. So I have chosen the strong way. I, it's the same when you have a motorbike accident. You're either gonna be scared for motorbikes for the rest of your life, or you jump back on the right and continue driving. So and This is what makes a good driver out, yeah? Exactly, exactly. And also a good fighter. Exactly. It's about never, never giving up and your body is capable of so much more. I believe that the body achieves what the mind believes, right? So if you set yourself a goal, your body is for sure capable of following. It's your mindset which stops you. So if your mindset is on point, you can achieve anything you want. What was your biggest motivation during that time? My biggest motivation? So I nearly, I nearly lost my life. So I went through a really, really tough time. And for me, seeing how other people just like looked at me as that broken man. I used to be champion. I walked down the street, people say, hey, champion, champion here, champion there. And suddenly I was this broken man who nearly ended up dead or paralyzed. And I wanted to look at life from a different perspective because what would happen? How would I continue with my life if I would have ended up in a wheelchair? Would I be miserable for the rest of my life and hate the world and be just like unsatisfied with everything? Or would I be just grateful to be still alive, to be able to enjoy life or like, what I simply give myself a bullet in my head because I think life doesn't make sense anymore. So I had all of these crazy thoughts running through my head and for me the worst thing was that I needed to accept the fact that I broke my neck and there was simply nothing I can do about it and I needed to wait three months before I could start recovery. Normally if you break your hand, you can work the rest of your body, you break your yeah. foot, you can work the rest of your body. But when I broke my neck, I couldn't even sit straight, I couldn't even lay, I couldn't sleep, I couldn't stand. I was incapable of doing 
everything. And for a person who did everything in life by himself, you know, and didn't accept anybody else's help, then to be dependent on help was really hard for me and it was really, really challenging to accept help, physical help and then also financial help because fighting was my main income for many years. And when I broke my neck, I wasn't able to fight for a whole year. So I had one year no income and the high of a high amount of uh, bills through the hospital visits and stuff. But what always kept me going is my family, my loved ones, and is for, for myself too, because I'm not gonna let myself down and other people who do believe in me. Uh, so like, like I always like, I believe that your life is your message to the world. So make sure it's, in, it's inspiring. Like if you wanna be remembered, you have to be outstanding. You can't just live like an ordinary life. So like in my life I took many risks because I believe no risk, no reward. And when the doctor told me you can never fight again, I for sure it hit me hard and I, and I, and I cried because I was like, this is my life, this is what I've been doing all my life. And, and, but in the same way, I didn't let him set a limit of my capabilities because I knew, about you, right? yes, exactly, because I, I knew myself what I'm capable of. I knew I can do it and I said to me, he can watch me. Either he like it or not, but he can watch me do my thing. This is how I went through life. I don't let any other people, you know, decide about my destiny or let them put limits on myself because I want something, you get in life, you know, what you give, you get what you give. It's simple like this. And for my comeback fight to be back in normal life and back into the fight life, I gave 150% 24-7 for a whole year. So, you know, for me, it was not surprising. I had the scenario so many times in my head, stepping back in the ring after I have broken my neck and do my comeback fight. So when that day actually become reality, it was for me, just like a vision come true. Uh -huh. it, it, it felt like I already experienced that scenario because I already been there in my uh -huh. mind so many times over and over again. Uh -huh. So when I walked just in- Just normal day. Like. <laughs> not, not a normal day, it was a really ordinary day because it was also, at, when I gave, when finally, when, after I've broken my neck, I struggled a lot to get back onto the stage because many organizations would decline me because they would be worried. Oh, the risk. Yeah, exactly, uh -huh. that something would happen in that fight again, right? Pascal, what made you open the gym? What was the idea behind? What is the message to the people? So I always love to share my knowledge. I've been giving seminars all over the world and I love the people's feedback and I love, peop I love to inspire people and give them motivation to succeed whatever goal is in their life. So pe people who come here to our gym, they come for different reasons. Some people, they come to build up confidence. Some people train for fitness reasons. Some people train to lose weight. Some come to learn only martial arts and some people come to, come, come to fight. But whatever your goal is, our team will make sure, you know, we will help you to reach your goal. For me, this is purely my passion. It was never, the whole fighting sports, it was never for me about money. It is just my, my heart, my blood, and my, and my tears. This is what I feel like I've been born to. And now with having my own gym, I am really happy to be able to share my knowledge with people from all over the world. So for me, that's what it's all about. Which advice you can give to young fighters who want to become champion? What, is, what made you so special? Which advice is the best? I think there's an English saying, it, says that self-doubt kills more dreams than failure will ever do. So the most problem I see in people, they don't believe in themselves. So I think if you want to achieve something, you should believe in yourself and you should give everything you got, you know, to work towards that goal and don't have other people set your limitations because you know yourself the best. Boom! <laughs> <laughs> okay, Pascal, thank you much okay. for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you, bro. Success, success. MAA, the Martial Arts Academy, is based in Kopangang. It's a, it's a new gym. Everything is brand new. And um, the owner and the co-founder, Pascal Schroth, a former world champion in Muay Thai and kickboxing, is the leader there. So he put all his knowledge into the gym yeah, so that the people can gain from, from his experience. Everything is set perfect. Perfect machines, perfect equipment and perfect classes. If you want to understand properly Muay Thai and also the right techniques from a champion, you should go there because Pascal, he's also very fluent in English. So he can bring you the message over that you can clearly understand him, what to take care of. Because sometimes, you know, it's a very detailful sport. And if somebody don't speak 80% of language, you miss 80%. But Pascal, he will tell you to 110% because he's a good talker, like you could see in the interview. And, um, I recommend everybody to try the gym out here and to learn and to understand real Muay Thai.